This is Real Talk with Rosanna Lucia and Brianna Black. Welcome to Real Talk. I'm Rosie, and today's episode is all about fashion. Joining me, I have Georgia Southern students Ansley Hamilton and Iman Woods. The first segment is a quick little history lesson on the evolution of fashion. Fashion started when humans began wearing clothes. These clothes were typically made from plants, animal skins, and bone. According to Wikipedia, the history of fashion design refers specifically to the development of the purpose and intention behind garments, shoes, and accessories, and their design and construction. The modern industry, based around firms or fashion houses run by individual designers, started in the 19th century with Charles Frederick Worth, who, beginning in 1858, was the first designer to have his label sewn into garments he created. After the First World War, a radical change came to be in fashion. Corsets were abandoned and women borrowed their clothes from the male wardrobe and chose to dress like boys. Although at first many designers were reluctant to adopt the new androgynous style, they embraced them wholeheartedly around 1925. A bustless, wasteless silhouette emerged and aggressive dress down was mitigated by feather boas, embroidery, and showy accessories. The flapper style became very popular among young women. Overall, the 1930s clothing was somber and modest, reflecting the difficult social and economic situation of the decades. In 1947, the designer Christian Dior created a tidal wave with his first collection. Fashion in the 1950s was far from being revolutionary and progressive, and used more from the previous decade, despite the fact that women had the right to vote, to work, and to drive to their, drive their own cars. They chose to wear dresses made out of opulent materials, with corseted waists and swirling skirts to mid-calf. The 60s saw kind of a throwback to the 1920s, with women once again adopting a childlike look, childlike look with bobbed haircuts and progressively less modest clothing. At the start of the decade, skirts were knee-length, but steadily became shorter and shorter until the miniskirt emerged in 1965, making the transition to tights ine- inevitable. The 70s hit, and the decade began with a con- continuation of the hippie look in the 1960s. With caftans, Indian scarves, and floral print tunics, jeans remain remain frayed and bell-bottomed. Tie-dye was still popular, and the fashion for unisex mushroomed. After 1975, fashion became uh, fashion came to be dominated by the disco look. During the 1980s, the mullet became the standard men's haircut, and women sported large, square-cut perms. Although there were very mer- very many variations of both. Jumpsuits became a popular element of female clothing on men, skinny neckties and wraparound sunglasses. Also during the 80s, aerobics was in vogue and so brought into style spandex leggings and headbands. Fashion at the end of the 20th century tackled themes that fashion had not previously embraced. These themes included rape, disability, religious violence, death, and body modification. There was a dramatic move away from the sexy styles aimed at the glamorous femme fatale of the 1980s. Clothes became ready-to-wear retailers such as The Gap, Banana Pub Republic, and Eddie Bauer came to the front, forefront of fashion, managing to tap into the needs of women who simply wanted comfortable, wearable clothes. The early mid-2000s saw a rise in the consumption of fast fashion, affordable, off-the-peg, high-street clothing based on the latest high-fashion designs. With its low-cost low appeal driven by trends straight off the runway, fast fashion was a significant factor in the fashion industry's growth. During the year 1999, department stores such as Macy's, JCPenney, Kohl's, and more had sales totaling $230 billion. In the years that followed, that number began to fall. By the early 2000s, the rise of online retail and in-store fashion caused department store sales to dwindle in sales in the wake of new styles being offered quicker than ever before by retailers. What do you think your favorite uh, decade of fashion is? Uh, I can start off for sure. My favorite decade of fashion is more of like a subsection of a decade of fashion, and that is early 2000s red carpet Disney and Nickelodeon <laughs> outfits. So like what? Y2K? Uh, you want to see an outfit looks. that'll scar your retinas? Check oh out anything God. Ashley Tisdale <laughs> wore exactly during her entire run in and Sweet Life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or London Tip- Tipton. That was my whatever. shit. Like, Tipton was popping up with different fits every single day. I've seen exact replicas of her outfits on TikTok, like, oh, daily. Yeah. And they look great. Yeah. 
That's like the epitome of Y2K. Yeah, they did not know how to dress back then. Uh, it's, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It at was all. like the excessive it was someone layering. Else dressing them. Oh, oh, Hannah Montana. Oh were my upset. god! I think like, I saw <laughs> something about skirts over jeans. Oh, oh I want to bring that god. back. Actually, really? I want to bring back like long dresses with jeans. I think people would probably die. Global I don't know. warming. I'm, I'm, you're right. Global warming would kill some people just because. But like, I think I'd do that for like. I'm the down fall. with long t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Long t-shirts, long t-shirts over and jeans. Okay that's cool too. I can like a, yeah. like that a makes tunic sense. over jeans. I think is okay. I, I tried that. But once you get like a waist Ooh. in there, especially like an Edwardian underbust waist, you're no jeans. No, I yeah, I agree. It has to be like kind of like. Yeah. Form not fitting. <laughs> no, realistically, my favorite decade is probably like classic '90s grunge fashion, mm-hmm. when like the really when the alt scene like first started to make a more mainstream appearance, and with that also comes like the wave of like '70s uh, post punk oh, yeah. and like metal fashion starting to come into. Mm-hmm. So you know, like the Sid and Nancy checkerboard like misfit style clothing, I'm really into. Yeah. What about you? Um, I'm partial to the like '70s funk and jazz, like that yeah. area, and also like the hippie down, like the hippie area, just because they were very relaxed and very calm. But they also said like, we don't want to be uptight people, and we don't want to be like, oh, um, I think that's what like when the world was trying to be super serious, and they're like business, business, business. Mm-hmm. But then you had like the Warriors come out, and everybody was dressed in their own cool like leather and red shirts. Like you know, Michael Jackson was popping around like, yeah. around that time. But then you go back to like the '70s with the bell bottoms and the afros yeah. and the scarves, and everybody was just relaxed. And I think. Oh, yeah. And all I, that, like, bohemian fashion was, like, a response to, like, Woodstock culture. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the, the Summer of Love, had just mm-hmm. gotten shorter, 69. and then they immediately went right back to the oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it, it was, was great. Yeah. But it because everyone cool. quickly realized that mini skirts are the most uncomfortable things in the entire world. I'm a tall girl. <laughs> if I wear a mini skirt and I bend over even a fraction I'm short and of that's a... Stone. <laughs> My entire it's ass universal. is out. It's yeah. not okay. A, a longer skirt's the way to go. But They're we never learned from our mistakes, so yeah. we're back at mini skirts. We're again. back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with I that. still can't wear them. I wear tights with mine. Like black tights. Mm. Well, I only mess with like high waisted, and you can't do high waisted mini skirts. Do they don't make high waisted mini skirts. They're it. always like drop, like <laughs> drop hip, low rise. Yep. And like, I got too much hip bone for that. I think okay. I'd just say that the 1970s is probably my favorite era, too. It's a Between good era. like the hippie look it's and like. back. Oh, it's co- it that's should. like my it shit too. Should, like because, I wear a lot of seventies. Because that's when you know peace and love was the was the, was the motive, and we need a little bit of right now, <laughs> well, especially with everything like, going on. After well, we, we finally can wear some more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right but um, no, between that and like, so like the hippie type of fashion, and then also like when like Queen and rock started to get really yes. like like prominent. That was my favorite era. Like I wear a lot of black. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, leather. I feel like that was, like, Fake this leather. kind of, um, almost, like, Queen really had, like, this weird, like, almost pre-grunge look to it, where it was... And it was an androgynous. I mean, yeah, like, Freddie yeah. Mercury, like, yeah, that... Yeah, breaking boundaries. Breaking many Absolutely. boundaries. Absolutely. Him, Prince. Prince, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my Prince. gosh. Listen. I feel like I'm missing a big one. I did not watch Prince oh. wear assless chaps oh. to the VMAs to watch people, like, pray as Harry Styles oh. for wearing a dress <laughs> well, and changing oh masculinity God. forever. He's, um, yeah, it's just, I think that you're right, that Harry Styles, once he put out his own music and kind of made this new era for himself, garnered in, like, a new wave of fans that are younger, and I, I did not consider that as much when thinking about, like, but it's still true, that, like, the, you know, Prince, Prince did a lot of work, Michael Jackson even did a lot of work, like, mm-hmm. in terms of, uh, ushering in androgyny into... I think there's, like, always, like... That one man in each decade. Yeah, this is the token that that stands out. (laughs) But then with that, I feel like the 90s and even maybe the early 2000s kind of ushered in a new era of like hyper masculinity with like short, really short hair coming in style, very like cropped and clean cut looks became like the leading male beauty standard with like people with like a more more sports idols coming into yeah, uh, like coming into the beauty industry mm-hmm. yeah. like so i feel like that was like kind of where we lost some of that like focus on trying to include more androgyny in male fashion but we you know we're swinging back in the other direction now so mm-hmm. especially with like the social like social movement with like people like wanting to um, 
have sexuality not be so, I would say taboo when it comes to conversation, but more like easily accessible. So like whenever they talk about partners being like uh, significant others and then that's to find their gender. So the same thing with clothing is like, we want there to be just no borders between yeah. the two because we made it up as Absolutely. we've been going along. Exactly, yeah, and, so that's like, and that's like, and that's a relatively, relatively new conversation mm-hmm. nowadays. Like the whole like the pronouns and everything oh, yeah. like that just came into play, and like I think that even adds in more of a play into like fashion too. Oh yeah, but I absolutely love it. I want that oh, conversation to never too. stop happening. I feel like the more we look at gender through like the myopic lens of just pure analysis, it makes less and less sense. Mm-hmm. And and it's hard for like the older generations, I feel like to understand, but their parents hated their rock music. So oh, yeah. like of right. course like there's always gonna be like a little gap and we just kinda catch up with each other. Mm-hmm. You're the cycle. Every like, generation before us is always gonna be a little bit behind and every generation I'm already behind already I mean like, like that's yes, just I'm a fact. Behind my little sibling is fifteen and I like I don't know half of the things that they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Because the world just moves faster and faster. And so, like, speaking of, Chugi is a new term. That I, I love heard. the word Chugi. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't god. love that word. I'm sorry. What? what okay, is, let's look at the Yeah, please. Okay, yeah. Because I'm Chugi is my favorite. Oh my god! Oh I love god. making fun of Chugi shit. You, it's so fun. You just. You just dated Chugi, me. You just made me feel old. Oh, we are old. Chugi oh, yeah. means something that's off trend. So, and it happens like so fast. It's not so fast. just something that's off trend though. It's this very specific brand of off trend. So, so an example of something very chuggy. This is my favorite example because I think it sums it up, sums it up perfectly. Chuggy is like live, laugh, love. Chuggy yeah, is yeah. Disney adults. Yeah. Chuggy is a uh, vaguely concealed alcoholism behind wine jokes like that <laughs> okay yes, so yeah, it's yeah. making okay okay now i can kind of see it it's like that like what old people find fun yeah on like facebook <laughs> but like also it's like things that are happening now so like it let's is see, like you know that now. and we'll get into this i'm about to start the second segment mm-hmm. but that uh you both have tiktok mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm all. I'm We're probably all on TikToks. very different TikToks, but yeah. there's this green dress that like it was made, like it has little like swirlies on it. Everyone had it, and there's like a tan one. It has little cutouts right here. Everyone had it. Okay. It was like on Amazon, on Sheen. Like I'm not familiar all, with this dress. Uh, I wonder if I can find it. It doesn't even <laughs> right, matter because so this is a podcast, so they wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah. Right, but a lot of people know what I'm talking about. That is now chuggy, and that was really popular. Like. 10 minutes ago. Like, no, literally I, 10 minutes ago. I, I don't vibe to. with that. Let people enjoy things for, like, a little bit before we decide to ruin it. I feel like oh. that's... I feel like it's everyone's first instinct to, like, be the first one to hate something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't hipster that. culture takes yeah, over. I don't because support that. Absolutely. It's like predatorial hipster culture. Because, like, I want to say the thing about being hipster was, like, you didn't want to be popular. You wanted to be on your own. But now it's like, I want to be so unpopular that I'm popular yeah. that everyone hates what I hate. Exactly. Well, and I think this comes from a deep issue with self-confidence in that we don't want anyone else to make fun of us so we're gonna be the first one to levy criticism even if we don't necessarily believe it because if we insult something that means other people can't Mm -hmm. because we did it first Mm -hmm. and so it's just this i think it comes from this like deep deep desire to be seen as like intelligent be seen as like cutting edge and cool Mm -hmm. and it really just results in a lot of like Honestly, just a lot of, like, interest bashing because mm-hmm. we don't know how to let other people enjoy stuff. We don't know yeah. how to let ourselves mm-hmm. enjoy things mm-hmm. because we're so worried we'll be made fun of yeah. for it. And it's ultra-pessimistic and self-toxic so at best. Because, like, I especially when it comes to, like, non, um, not, like, popular things. So, like, even in, like, small facets, like, like, liking comic books or, like, gatekeeping and things like that, mm-hmm. they're like, you can't like this because... But when I was little, I got bullied for it. And it's like, well, no, I mean, that's yeah. yeah. different now. It's like, different, let yeah. people let, let people figure it out for themselves. Or even and you then... can't like this unless you know about this. Oh, my I God. hate that. And, and I think that that's really prevalent, like, on, like, a campus like Georgia Southern. Because, like, I feel like, personally, that everyone's style is very different than mm-hmm. mine. And... I think that I feel sometimes that I'm going to get, like, looked at weird for Mm -hmm. wearing something other than a t-shirt and shorts. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's exactly, like, you know, the type of thing that would be seen as chuggy, you know? So, well, it's also so much easier to dress, like, kind of comfortably if you're a college student just because you're in such a rush and 
That is no true. No one's going to mm-hmm. see you but your professors and yeah. your classmates that you hate. So, like, why dress up for them? But I feel like part of my, like, soul is expressing myself, like, mm-hmm. on the outside. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. I was and hoping I want to think that I'm one of those people, people yeah. but if mm-hmm. I wake up late, my outfit looks uh, very, very basic. Mm-hmm. That's actually, that's literally but what happened But basics can be beautiful. Good if you Very true. Kind of like what we were talking about earlier in Starbucks. Like, both of our outfits today, they obviously can't see them, are very, very simple, but they still work because they're they fit nicely on the body. They're well coordinated and they're accessorized well. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, yeah. they make sense to you. Yeah. And so when your confidence shows through, the outfit kind of complements that. And Absolutely. I can expect that because, yeah. like I said, when I before I came here, I was wearing a yellow shirt. I just I woke up late. I woke up at ten o'clock for a ten ten class. <laughs> so I literally Mood. yep grab. Grab them, no, yeah. but then I came here and I had to think, so I was like, okay, as I don't know. As long as my nipples are covered, I'm <laughs> I had to think, I was like, okay, so what do I want to wear to this thing? I don't know if I'm going to be seen or not, so I want to coordinate. Like, uh, uh, the thought that goes into it and the introspection and the, it's like, yeah. you have to be introspective about an external view, Absolutely. so it's got to like, make those two things match. How yeah. do I want to be seen, how do I want to be perceived versus how I perceive myself, mm-hmm. and so this was the culmination of that. Yeah. Although I'm running into this weird, like, effect right now where... Like the, 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 no, no, no. Okay. Can you start that? Yes, one? Okay. <laughs> um, but lately I've been experiencing this weird effect where the more personalized my wardrobe gets and the weirder items that I collect and the more eccentric outfits that I put together, the harder I find it to actually dress casually yes yes now i own so many weird items that like if i want to wear them i have to wear them with a specific outfit or a specific set of accessories or it looks stupid yes oh my god (laughs) exactly like i own so many pants that like i can't wear with the majority of my shirts they only go with certain combos it's (laughs) like now it's like well now i've just made outfits like i didn't make a trend i gotta make a style i just Mm -hmm. made outfits that i can pick from so it's so bad speaking of trends i'm gonna lead us into the second Um, segment Absolutely, yeah. um, so this second segment is going to be about fast fashion and influencer trends. Okay. Um, so the ethics of fast fashion has been the topic of numerous debates and questioning of business practices. Producing fashion at such fast rates involves less than secure worker conditions and non-livable wages for the laborers. It also involves a lot of waste. Americans throw out 14 million tons of clothing a year with the help of fast fashion. I think some very prominent trends that really stuck with me and even swayed me into wearing, like, some sort of version of them is, uh, I don't know if you remember, like, in the early months of this year, the leather jackets, like, blazers. Yeah. I bought, I thrifted a, uh, like, a really long, like, matrix version oh. of that kind. Yeah, oh I love gosh. it so much. Those and then kind of also, like kind of trench coats come yeah, back. Yeah, like, Cowboy boots have come back, and I am I'm here for it. I'm fucking, like, they're I'm sexy. I love yeah. them. But in the right way. Mm. Yes. Like, like, I pair them with a mini skirt and, like, a crop top or something. Like, not, like... My mom has a friend a who down. buys and refurbishes old cowboy boots and then paints them all these crazy colors. That's awesome. And I, li- I, I actually want, am thinking about, like, getting a pair from her because they you are totally super cool looking. I got a pair at Goodwill for $5. So yep. you could... Probably? Yes. Oh, man, because they're, like, and they're, they're expensive. Beautiful. They are they're expensive. Like, a good. nice pair of cowboy boots is going to cost you, like, a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because what is it? I but went it's to, worth it I went because to a, they'll last your entire life. Because mm-hmm, I went to a rodeo earlier this year. <laughs> nice. And so I didn't get the boots because the boots were expensive at the yeah, time. Yeah. And I was like, but I got a hat. Yeah. And I, oh, I, I want a cowboy hat. Listen, um, the, the, cow, the cowboy hat with the denim, with the, the Sherpa yes. denim jacket, mm-hmm. and then the boots. I had regular, I had like boot boots, but they still look good. Oh, I was, on, I was killing. Oh, my God. Yes. I killed. It's really hard to not make things like that look like a costume. So probably yeah. you know, right. Like, you That's that. it, it was it was borderline costume. But honestly, like, I don't if think you I'll look ever... at like actual cowboy fashion, it does not look like a costume. It looks like a dope outfit. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah, it's yeah. Worn on the right coming. person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to remember it is a, it is based on person to person. No, uh, but yeah. You make it like I, a caricature. Though. I thrift like most yes. of my clothes. If you do it right, it looks um, really good. Because mm-hmm. like I try to stay away from fast fashion. I think ponchos come back in style with, oh, with that whole like with like um with western. I want ponchos back. Very I used to have a poncho. Too. See, That's cowboy, yeah. cowboy. I, yeah, I, 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 I had to get them for the appropriate shirt, but like cowboy, cow, cowboy. Uh, but on fast fashion, I think that fast fashion, fast fashion is one of my least favorite things. Period. Just in the entire world, mm-hmm. I hate it. I think most fast fashion uh, looks cheap, uh, ugly, <laughs> ugly. The dupes are like the worst. I think. 
looks like awful. the replicas. Did you guys see those pictures of H and M where like it was those weird gray dresses because they're experiencing like a rush of Victorian funerals for some reason? Like no, no like I didn't see fast that. fashion is awful. I despise it. I think that seasonal fashion is one of the worst things that we can do just as people. Um, rewear clothes and don't feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, donate what you don't wear anymore. Anymore, if you can buy secondhand consignment or thrift, please do so, because clothing waste is a big, big part of like over. Like just tr- our tr- we have a trash crisis mm-hmm. as a country, as a society. We have a trash crisis, and clothing makes up an unbelievable amount of that waste and i don't know if you guys know this but fabric is not exactly designed to biodegrade very yeah. quickly uh, it's made yeah. to last and so it's sitting here taking up a lot of space on there which we could be using for a lot of other things oh yeah but we'll digress into that and reuse fabric if mm-hmm. you want to make something yeah. like mm-hmm. it's easily accessible at your local thrift store but I think oh yeah Oh, yeah, I'm just right. <laughs> that's the thing about like I guess society right now is that they don't want to be seen using old stuff because old is connotated with bad and yeah. old is being connotated with like let me bring this back because it, if it's not vintage it's old and old is bad but if it's vintage like if it has the aesthetic vintage is cool if it, if it has a certain like aesthetic or shine to it then it's like oh no this is we can bring this back uh-huh. but fast fashion I was like, it, it is bad but it comes from the fact that nobody wants to be left behind when it comes to like modern mod, modernity is that the word I'm looking for modern ner- mod- modernity <laughs> <laughs> it just and it comes down to the like these influencers mm-hmm. the trends yeah. that the, they like are constantly changing the way mm-hmm. they're dressing and like they have insane amount of followers oh, yeah. that want to look like these people and want to smell like these people mm-hmm. and want to buy what that person's buying. Because mm-hmm, if they're popular and they're being validated, you want to be popular exactly. and validated too. I find so, that a lot of that influencer culture like stuff comes down to like an athleisure aesthetic. Oh, where, like yeah. A lot of them are recommending these very casual, very basic, very soulless, very well, lack dress. of personality. Yeah, like, yeah, I've been seeing this TikTok ad for like this plain dress that just happens to have shorts on yep. the skirt which like <laughs> that's not new dress. that's not new by the way skorts been existing i yes. see it on my phone every single day every single day and i'm like one the dress itself boring as hell like mm-hmm. so boring so bland mm-hmm. so i think fast fashion is very soulless don't buy fast fashion also you get a plus if you don't buy fast fashion and you're not supporting a multi-billion dollar company that exploits the laborers that make the clothing in the first place. So, you know, that's a plus. But I think that there's also a question that we have to think of, and this is a perspective that I only recently considered, and honestly, I had to admit to myself that I was pretty blind and pretty privileged for not considering this, and it's that a lot of people depend on fast fashion for cheap, reliable clothing. Not everyone has the privilege or the financial status to thrift really good clothing or mm-hmm. consign. Because consignment has become a trend in of itself. Where, like, yes, you can still always go to Goodwill and get a reliable $5 t-shirt or, like, $7 dress. But now secondhand shops realize that there is a market to be made off of the thrifting trend. Mm-hmm. And so now we are seeing, like, the same secondhand stores upscaling their items and with that upping their prices and so the people who started thrifting as a means for saving money because mm-hmm. they came from underprivileged under financial like un, like non socioeconomic privileged backgrounds are now experiencing a scarcity of those same resources that they depended on because now they're fashionable mm-hmm. and that's definitely like it's that brings to light that like it's not just a consumer problem like it's not, it's, it's not these teenage girls like wanting to buy cute clothes from a fast fashion, you know, store like H&M or Forever 21, it's also the company that made it. Mm-hmm. They have to do better, not just us. They Absolutely. have to improve working conditions. They have to stop mass producing in unethical ways that produce so much waste. Like, there's just a lot that needs to be uh, talked about, I think. Yeah. And it's like, for every influencer that... I'm so sorry. I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I was I was for every influencer that makes this, like, previously... Uh, kind of like for every influence that makes a resource that was re- like leaned on for underprivileged communities a trend is a mother that is now struggling to clothe her children mm-hmm. reliably. Because um, is this related to the whole debop thing? Debop, debop. De- I, I, 
Depop, Depop, Romwe, Sheen, all of that stuff. Is, yeah, that, that little, like, like... They thrift stuff and mm, price them and, ex- like... Ex- 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 exorbitant amount of times. And so companies were like, we're not going to let small people do this when we can do this. And exactly. that's why... Because I, I, I put two and two together because I didn't know about them um, raising... Like, the thrift stores raising their prices. I'm still working into this world, so it's kind of new. <laughs> but I'm keeping up. And that's why I was like, wait a minute. Didn't deep up? And then I was like, okay. Okay, I see now. Thank you for clarifying that. A lot of those secondhand, like, outlets online, like Romwe and Sheen, like I said before, are constantly coming under fire for stealing independent creators Mm -hmm. styles and independent creators designs designs, Mm -hmm. and then marketing them mass producing them and making them less high quality Mm -hmm. and then making them way way cheaper which means that now people who like wanted to make money off of that original fashion design now have lost out to a uh, major retailer and there's no way to cut it a small business cannot compete Mm -hmm. with like a superstore yep. on the mm, internet yeah. because they have more resources mm-hmm. and more stuff to burn through, but it's less oh, yeah. personal. Exactly. But people don't care because it's cheaper. Yeah. But then somebody who has to like, like it's like it's like an artesian building, like yeah. a like a what they call it, embroidery. Like they mm-hmm. have to go through in their soles and every stitch, yeah. and, and then so that's just a machine doing it. Mm-hmm, and yeah. that's why, like, I can understand the price for that being so high because you yeah. put all your oh, time yeah. and energy Absolutely. into that. I think that. artists should price high for their time mm-hmm. and ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that means that. Oops, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, and but then. Uh, and, you bring up the stealing of like intellectual property so like people's like uh, especially when it comes to like art on like social media like twitter instagram and facebook where like they like they'll put their uh watermark or whatever like their signature in big like obscene places now because the people will go through and edit it out like they will Mm -hmm. take the time to not thank the person to not put credit they'll be like all right i will get someone to edit this out so i can steal that i'm like if you oh yeah like then yeah. don't just make them like it just it bothers Absolutely. me that's why i think that one of the most ethical things that you can do if you're trying to shop clothing ethically is shop on etsy yeah find etsy is indi- great find independent Lots like great artists stores who will make things perfectly for you like perfectly for you with the, like your, your measurements, measurements yeah exactly and honestly i've found that like most of the things that i get off of etsy i am getting for a better price than i would yeah. find in a major retailer I got my senior prom dress off of Etsy. What do you think, like, the average prom dress costs? Like, give me a ballpark. Mine yeah. was, like, 400 Oh, I'm, I said 2000 I know, I know nothing. <laughs> okay, that's, like, a wedding right? dress. Okay, that's, like, an expensive good. wedding dress. A thing. lot of people will go to, like, these, like, stores <laughs> that have, you know, a set style, and they'll get, like, the same kind of, yeah. like, they'll pick from, like, one of five different mm-hmm. dress styles that mm-hmm. are available, mm-hmm. and then they'll pay $500. I got a dress that was handmade by an like an independent dressmaker on Etsy. It was a gorgeous, unique style that I had not seen before that was like self created and I got it for three hundred dollars. That's mm. awesome. That's really amazing. You can you can get there is a way to shop ethically, to shop smart and to shop financially well. Yeah. You just have to put in the work to do it. There's mm-hmm. a lot of smart alternatives that you can do and with that I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up I think that we had a really great conversation on like the ethics behind mm-hmm. fast fashion and just like how you can recreate these styles from each decade without you know harming the earth yeah. <laughs> and harming yourself without and literally, being like, mean to yourself and being mean to others and and degree. Degree. there's so much that we're still learning um, and there's so much that we can do to like improve fashion and like just help each other and mm-hmm. you know love the earth love yourself um so yeah love well, your clothes yeah with your clothes <laughs> express yourself um well that was rosie ansley hamilton and iman woods Happy thank you for you. tuning in that was real talk we'll see you next time yeah.